What's going on everyone? So welcome to my latest video. This is obviously part of a series where I focus on a specific year of Best Picture nominees and rank those nominees from worst to best. Done such years in the past is 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, and of course, you clicked on this video. So you know, this time around, I'm focusing on the 2004 Academy Award Best Picture nominees and ranking them from worst to best. Now, here's the thing. This is just like years in the past. This is a year where there were five Best Picture nominees. So it'll be five being the worst, to one being the best, and of course, my humble opinion. So guys, I look forward to hearing your guys' thoughts on the Best Picture nominees and your ranking down below, but guys, enough exposition. Let's get started. So kicking things off with number five, we have Finding Neverland. This is an okay movie. It is a movie that I should love, given the fact that Kate Winslet is one of my favorite actresses, if not my favorite, and Johnny Depp is also in this film. It's well acted for sure. It's fine performances. Um, it's fine in terms of the filmmaking, but it just doesn't really have that emotional resonance that you would think that a film like this would have. Um, I just, I haven't had any urge to revisit this film. It seems like it's a one and done type film. That being said, I have heard some people really dig this film and I can respect that. But for me, it was just all right. And um, that's why it's my number five. Next up, my number four is Ray. This is a really good example of a film with an incredible performance, but everything surrounding it is fine. It's solid. Um, by no means is the filmmaking bad. I'm not going to say that. It, it's actually rock solid. Um, but I just think that when people think about the film Ray, including myself, they think of the performance um, in the lead role and not necessarily the film surrounding it. And, you know, I guess that's just a testament to how great Jamie Foxx was in the film. But I don't know, like, Again, I just haven't wanted to revisit this film either, similar to Finding Neverland. It's a solid film for sure. Um, I liked it, but again, in retrospect, it's just, you know, it's a film with a great performance and everything else just kind of gets put in the back burner. What can I say? In terms of, again, recollection. But um, yeah, that's why it's my number four. And I want to say this. I understand if Ray is higher up for a lot of people. I, I get that. But for me, again, there were three other Best Picture nominees that I liked more. But um, yeah, my number three is uh, Sideways, an Alexander Payne film. Uh, Sideways, I liked. I thought that it was good. It does a really good job in terms of really developing characters in terms of that are friends and just clearly have like a bumpy kind of friendship. But at the same time, they've been friends for so long that you just can't help but really feel for them. And um, I think the chemistry between the two leads is great. Um, it's a film that is kind of slice of life, if you will. I mean, it definitely is like a searing drama, but it is also a slice of life film, in my personal opinion, and it does a really good job with what it's trying to depict. Strong script. That's why it's my number three. Next up, my number two is The Aviator. That's right. A Scorsese film. I love The Aviator. I really do. And honestly, I'm so glad that I've had the urge in the last couple of years to revisit this film. And, um, to be honest with you, I bought this at the record store, this trilogy pack, um, specifically because of The Departed. I, I love The Departed. Goodfellas, I think, is good, which I know is sacrilegious. A lot of people like love this film. I get that. But The Aviator, I, I kind of always knew that it was a film that I should revisit. Because when I saw it, and I think it was like, what, late 2012 or early 2013, I remember thinking that it was just okay. But at the same time, there were just certain visuals that I just would kind of come back to mentally. And I would always say, I should probably revisit this film. So... When I had COVID at the beginning of, um, what was it, 20, 2022, beginning of 2022, I said to myself, you know what, I'm just going to watch all three films in this combo pack. Um, and I watched The Aviator again. I was like, holy cow, this film is great. Loves The Aviator. I, honestly, I've been itching to revisit it already, like a third time. I really, really dig this film. What they do with the cinematography is just jaw-dropping, honestly. Great performances, great costume design. Um, despite it being a long film, I didn't personally feel the length. Um, I have heard some people say that they have, which is a shame, but it's a great film. DiCaprio did such a great job in the lead role. And again, all the other supporting characters also did a great job. But um, yeah, that's why it's my number two. Now look, any other year I would say The Aviator, give it best picture. Give it to it. But 2004, there was a film that came out that was a lot better. And it's very hard-hitting. And my number one is Million Dollar Baby, which did win Best Picture, and rightfully so. It is a gut-wrenching film. It is a film that you don't necessarily have to like sports films. I know for me, I'm very hit or miss in terms of the genre. But this is a film that it gives you what you think you know in terms of the genre, but then it pulls the rug out from under you, and it says, aha, this is what the film is all about. And honestly, re-watching the film multiple times... 
it's very, very interesting and investing as to how the film does such a great job of developing everything that came before the third act. If you don't know about the third act, I got to say that's awesome because I didn't know about the third act. I really didn't. I, I'll never forget watching this film for the first time. I just thought it was going to be like a sports sports genre film. And the only difference is that it's female boxers. But lo, lo and behold, I, I was I, I was blindsided, if you will. Um, so I just best best way to watch this film is not knowing anything about it, really. Not going to lie. And also, this is a great example of narration done very well. Morgan Freeman's narration here, it's amazing. Great performances, great dark, you know, dark, dark lighting of cinematography, a, a score that is very melancholy. It's just a film that's very hard-hitting. I loved it. I loved Moon Dog Baby, and that's why it is my number one. But yeah, guys, those are uh, my personal ranking of the Best Picture nominees from 2004. Let me know your ranking of said films in 2004. And guys, as always, thank you, thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget the subscription, notification bell, follow me down on Letterboxd, and I will uh, catch you guys later.